So we are here on a nice Wednesday night, and probably a lot of you sitting in the heat. I don't know where you are, but uh, thank you for joining us. And we don't know where we're going today, as usual. So we're going to see who comes through and who I might have something to talk about. Spelling it out is how we get out of the cage, you see. We have to cast a spell. And so I'm going to cast a spell over you. And the spell I'm going to cast over you is the one that goes. Fasten your seat belts, everyone. Because we are going to take a ride to the other side. So, if you are afraid of the other side, then you won't want to go with us. Because a lot of people are afraid of the other side. Because they sighed and they said, well, I read that there is something to dread over there and I don't want to know what it is. And so if you're afraid of the other side, you won't want to go on this ride. But if you are fearless, you see, you will experience an ecstasy because you'll come to see a view of reality that you never had before. And you will score some points because the points will be on your pencils, you see, because we'll sharpen them for you. So you can put them to paper and write the story that we're gonna tell to you. So tonight we have a story to tell to you. This is Thomas, and I have Steve here, and Tobias, and Riemann, and a whole bunch of others. Some you've heard of, and some you have not. But they all care, you see. They all care about the way they wear their hair, because you see, they trust on reality. Now, what does it mean to trust on reality? It means to trust that you exist permanently. We can't get rid of you. So we can't throw you off the bus if you get on the bus. But if you choose to stay where you are, then we'll just have to let you be covered by the rising sea. Now, we use that term, the rising sea, to cover a lot of eventualities. So it doesn't mean just that the sea is going to rise and cover you. You might lose your house in a tornado or a wildfire. You might drop over from heat exhaustion. You might get caught in a car on a flooded street. We can't know what will happen to you. But what we can know is that the world will go through an upheaval, you see. How do we know that the world will go through an upheaval? Because we can already see it, you see. Imagine that you're standing on a very top of a very tall building. And you can see people walking dozens of blocks away because you have a good line of sight to where they are. And you can see which way they're walking. And maybe as they get closer, you see that they are carrying a certain object 
And you would say, well, they're going to the food market today because they've got their shopping bag with them. Or they're going to return some nails to the hardware store because they have a bag of nails with them. And so you can see what's coming, you see? And you watch them walk down the street and take a turn to wherever they're going and you say, well, I figured they would go that way. I figured they would go that way because you were reading the clues, you see? And so we can see a lot further than most of you because we live in a realm that is higher than yours, you might say, although we don't think of it that way here. You think of it there, that way there, because that's the way you wear your hair when you're on earth, you see. You have a very limited point of view. And you have to take it with you wherever you go. So when you go walking down the street, you have a limited point of view. You can only see what's in front of you or beside you, or if you turn around, what's behind you. But your sight might be blocked by a building or a tree. And so you sometimes can see more and sometimes you can see less, right? Does everybody agree that you have a limited point of view when you're on Earth, you see? And so when we get a more advanced point of view, or a more comprehensive point of view, we can do things that others can't do. And we can see reality from a different point of view. But it's our reality, it's not your reality because your reality is the one you experience from your limited point of view. And ours is the one we experience from where we are. So if you're on the top of the building, that allows you to see far away. You have a different point of view than the person on the street who's right below you, right? And so if you can comprehend that there is the possibility that everybody in the world has a different point of view than you, then you'll be careful what you say. Because you're not likely to say, hey, if I was you, I'd do it that way, because that's the way I do it. I would never act that way, because you don't have the same point of view as others do. So you don't know what's making them act that way. You don't know what they see and what they experience and what they have experienced. You don't know their history. You don't know their story. Their history could be as simple for you, if you're standing on that building, that you can see them down the street. And you can see them walking towards the place where they intend to go. And so if you were to come down from the building and greet them, you would say, hey, I know your history for the last 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Because I saw where you were going. And I saw what you were doing. I saw you walking side by side by your friend. And the two of you were talking. And so you would know something about those people that would surprise them, you see because you had a higher point of view. And so if we know some things about you, it's because we have a higher point of view. However, we can't always see what you do because of the thick layer of dark clouds that encircle the earth and obscure our view. We can't really tell what's going on with you unless you clear away the clouds and say, hey, I'm here today and I'd like to talk to you. And that helps us know that you below are wanting us to blow away the clouds so that you can see us and we can see you. Now, if you can see us and we can see you, then you would get a different point of view, wouldn't you? If I, and this is, Thomas could wave at you and you'd say, oh, Thomas, hi, how are you? 
That would give you a different point of view, wouldn't it? And if I were on the other side of a fence and I started talking to you and said, hi, neighbor, how are you today? You would be sharing a conversation with me and we would each have a different point of view than if we didn't talk to each other, you see? So even through talking, we can get a point of view that we might not have had if we both said nothing. You might even not you might not even know who lives beside you if they didn't call over the fence. Hey neighbor, I was wondering how you are today. And you would say, Well, I'm pretty good. I was hoping we'd get some rain today, but I don't see any coming. What do you think? And they might say, Well, I've got a sprinkler you could use. Would you like my sprinkler? And you might say, okay. And so you'd share your reality because when he hands that sprinkler over the fence, you are communicating and cooperating. You see, you're cooperating. And so what we're doing here is we're cooperating. We're cooperating with you. It is an operation that involves cooperation. Because if the two of us, or the three of us, or the four of us, or the 10 of us, or 20 of us can talk to each other and explain our point of view, then we can begin to get a clearer idea of reality. Because our reality will expand, you see. Our reality expands when we cooperate. When we isolate ourselves, then there is no trust on any future. But the one that you will accept for yourself, you see. And so if you don't yell across that fence at your neighbor, you might never know you exist. And an opportunity would be missed. For you to expand your point of view. Maybe he would invite you over to his house, you see, for a cup of lemonade. And you would sit on the back deck and you would say, hey, I like those flowers that you're growing there. Where'd you get those? And they might say, well, here, I have a few that we can dig up and I'll give them to you. And little by little, your realities interweave you see your realities interweave and you have a history together that includes each other now the question for today is how we will play in the coming day the heat is a repeat of the beat of the song that we've been singing all day long because we've been singing about the changes that are coming to the earth. Now, it's not that hot in North Dakota where you are, Steph, compared to other Julys. It's just a little hotter than it's been because it was a pretty cool June. But in some places, the heat's beginning to heat up the feet of those who couldn't keep the beat. And they were running away from the truth, you see. They were running away from the truth because they thought they could run fast enough. They would outrun the fun that was coming to them, because the fun that's coming to them, you see, is the reality that belongs to the ones who have opened their eyes to see that they can't escape reality. So the ones who know they can't escape reality will be happy to be on the ride to the other side. But those who 
want to hide from reality, will have to stay behind, you see, in the world of the rising sea. And those who have chosen to take the ride to the other side will no longer abide in the realm of those who choose to be in the dark, you see. They will be the ones who have chosen to save humanity. I'm not kidding here. I'm not fooling here. I'm not trying to suck you in to some kind of story just for the glory of it. There is something coming that is going to be devastating. You see, it's going to be devastating. I don't know how to get through to you people out there, that it's going to make you tear out your hair and say, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened to the world we knew? And so all I can say is that there is a shared reality and it is created by you. You also have your own point of view from which you try to figure out what you're going to do tomorrow and the next day, whatever comes. And usually you think whatever comes will be the same. That has come the last few days, but it isn't going to be that way anymore, people. It isn't going to be that way anymore. And so the beat of the drum is no longer here to reassure you that you'll go to heaven if you say three Hail Marys and are absolved of your sins, you see. It just ain't going to work that way because heaven is reserved on earth for those who have learned to play nice with each other. And when I say nice with each other, I don't mean that you can't say a foul word or two or that you can't forget and take somebody else's shoe. I mean that you learn to accommodate to one another. You learn to say, hey, I understand you're having a rough day. Let me pick up the slack for you. Or I trust that you will never lack as long as I have anything to give to you and share with you. And so if you are one of those who would like to know where to go, to escape the rising seas, you need to listen to your heart, you see, because your heart will guide you. And if you're one of those that doesn't really care, and you say, I don't care, because whatever comes, I don't want to have to do the work of trying to figure out how to evade it, you see, I'll just be swallowed in the rising sea, then that's okay. Because if that's the way you want to play, that's the way you want to play. And if you're one of those who says, well, I think the press should decree that there's no climate change, you see, then you're pretty stupid. And there isn't much that I can do to wake you up. Because I'm woke, you see. I'm woke. Get it? This is Thomas Jefferson, and I am woke. Because I'm the bloke who once upon a time and the Declaration of Independence for a small group of people that came together to say, hey, let's wake up today. 
let's wake up and let's not play in the old way. Let's not bow to King George's picture on the wall. And let's not say, hey, he's the one who gets the decree if we live or die and if there will ever be a rising sea. He's not the one that is the king of all that we see. Because whatever your point of view, when you start share it, you see, you expand your reality. And whatever you see, if you share it, you see, you can contract your reality. Let me explain that. If you share a trust on being dust, or you share a trust on being free to commit all the sins you want, and God will set you free because you have enough money to convince your followers that you are the second coming of Jesus, then your world will contract because all you share is your fear, you see. That's all you share and your love of gold. And so you worship the golden idol and you say, boy, I'd like to be you today. I'd like to have all that gold and be able to tell other people that climate change is just a hoax. I'd like to have all your gold and be able to tell people that they can get rich too if they vote for me. This is the dwindling of the reality that you see because you have blinders on. You have blinders on and you can't see reality at all. And so if all you see is the crack in the sidewalk as you walk along, that's what you're going to share with others you see. Oh my God, this sidewalk is cracked. Oh my God, the sidewalk is cracked. And everybody will cry, oh my God, the sidewalk is cracked. Because that's all we can see. That's all we can see. Now is the time to pick up your feet and beat the crowds, you see, to the place where you will be protected by God. Because God does say, I will protect the ones who turn to me and are willing to take the ride to the other side. Because the other side, you see, is the other side of hate. It is the side of the Garden of Eden. Because the only one who closed the gate to the Garden of Eden was the one who turned to hate. And when you turn away from God, you turn to hate. And hate is nothing, you see. And so gradually you begin to disappear. You begin to disappear. And those who take the ride to the other side say, I don't even know what that was. I don't even know what that was that went by in that burst of gaseous fumes. I don't know what that was because it makes no sense to me because I've returned to reality. I no longer trust on a false humility or a false sense of shame or a false sense of blame. I no longer trust on the ones who trust on blaming and shaming one another, you see, because I just look at the ones who do this or that, and I say, what's going on there today? Why do they keep saying, hey, we got to play this way? We all got to say there's a great crack in the sidewalk, and that is what they say, because they're taught to say that because they have a very, very limited point of view. 
So where am I going with this? And why am I talking about this today with you? Because I know who will be captured by the rising sea. And I'll tell you how I know this. Because I can see you from up here. I can see where you are. And I can see where you're going, you see. And so if you aren't beginning to go toward the places where you will be safe, I know who you are. And I know who's going to the places that will be safe. Because I can see it from here. And that's what I have to tell you today. Pick wisely. Choose your friends wisely. Because you see, they don't have your back. Then they're not really friends, are they? If they're not going to be there to say, hey, you can use my lawn sprinkler today. But instead they're going to say, hey, you got any food over there? Because my pantry's bare. And all the crops got ruined by the droughts and the floods. You got any food over there? If you do, I got a gun and I'll stick it in your face and say, just give me your food and I'll go away. And that will be the way they play because their world is so small, you see, that they couldn't grow at all. Couldn't grow at all. Now I'm going to have to be a little more caustic in the way that I say this. There is going to be a lot of bloodshed in the rising sea. There already is a lot of bloodshed all around the world today. And there has been for a while. Periodically, the flag is raised somewhere and people say, hey, join us today to kill our neighbors, you see. And this has been going on for a long, long time. And it's going on in the world today. And it's unfortunately going to come to the USA. And if you don't believe this, that's okay. But if you do, now is the time to say that you need to get on the train that will take you to the other side, you see. Because the other side is the place where you will find that there is nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about because the other side you see is the side where God says to you, welcome home, welcome home. Welcome home does not mean that you're dead and you've come to heaven. Welcome home means that you've come home to the Garden of Eden, you see. Welcome home means that you've come back to me because you were the ones who left me behind you see you left me behind i didn't kick you out of the garden you ran away because you couldn't stay because you could only see the crack in the sidewalk you see and you thought the world was coming apart and so you ran away and you didn't say hey god What can I do for you? What can I do for you? You just said, I got to protect my own head, so I better run away. And you created the idea of heaven and hell in order to try to control the world that you couldn't control because you didn't understand and that the only one who has control of you is the one 
who speaks to you through your heart and says, if you want to play that way, fine. I'll let you play that way. And that'll be the way that you will play. And if you want to play a different way, then tell me true. Because I'm here waiting for you in the garden, you see. I'm waiting for you to return to me. Because the Garden of Eden, you see, is in the heart of mankind. Lies in the heart of mankind. And the heart of mankind is where the kind gather, you see. And they say, we will not play in the old way. We will not fight each other over a scrap of bread. We will not deny the reality that we see when we take off the blinders. We will work together to create a new view. And in that new view, the garden inside of you will blossom, you see, and it will become your reality. Because everything you do contributes to the world you knew, everything you do, and everything you say. And if you stole that bread from your neighbor at the price of his serenity, then you have given away the serenity of the garden in order to try to steal from God what was God's. You can't take from God what is God's. But God can give to you what you give to God. And if you give God nothing, God will give nothing to you. And if you give God a hell, God will give a hell to you. And if you give to God a garden, God will give a garden to you. All right. Any thoughts or feedback? Well, the only thing I'm thinking of is like, I know that I've lived so many years just, you know, um, getting things from convenience and, and, um, I'm actually, since I've changed my point of view about a lot of stuff, I'm excited to learn more about gardening and, and farming and, and giving back to the earth. Cause I've done my well share of, of, you know, just convenience all in, and so, yeah, I've done my share too of just trying to survive in the world in one way or another, whatever you had to do, right? You just get by I, because why? I don't even know why. Why even bother is a good question. You know, why not just sit down and say, I don't care today because 8 billion people, one less, <laughs> might be a good thing for the world. I'm not subscribing to offing yourself. I'm just saying that. I wonder why we even care. Is that a good question or not? Steve will take the next segment here because I hear what you're saying, Steph. And I fear that if I hear another sad symphony from somebody who does say hey they won't do it my way they won't do it my way that I'll have to say well I guess you're not the golden e excuse me idol today but you can be the one who picks up after them you see so, if you keep trying to get others to play like you, then eventually you will have to clean up after them because that's the way it works, you see. You throw the party and you have to pick up 
all the crap they leave around. And wash all those dishes, you see. So what do you want to be? You want to be the party that is so hearty that everyone just comes to party. And then when they find out that it isn't going to be the paradise they thought it was going to be, they abandon you with all the mess, you see. And so I'm speaking to you, the people who think that they can walk into Congress or the presidency and say, you all need to do what I tell you to. You all need to do what I tell you to because I'm the one that is in control of the party. And I'm the one that is inviting you to party hardy so you'll vote for me and continue to throw your used glasses, wine glasses all over and spill the wine on the carpet you see and trash your own country. Don't do it, folks. Don't do it. Don't destroy the USA. That's all I have to say. Any more thoughts? Just really good messages coming through. What? Just really good messages coming through. Pretty tough, pretty tough. No. No what? No. Where are you going? No. Because you need to know that these are not good messages for the ones who hate us, you see. The ones that hate us will continue to hate us and they will say, well, you're trying to trick us today. You're trying to trick us into thinking that we should play your way. And this is Tobias to say, it is always that way. It is always that way. That there will always be a few who say, well, that's a good thing to hear today. And there will be those who say, go away. Because we don't want to hear what you say. Because God kicked us out of the garden and we blame God for it. And we trust on heaven and hell. And we trust that we can continue to grow. Our per personal brand. Until it covers all the land. And there's no place for the crops to grow. But we know that it's okay. Because God will take us to heaven one day. And we'll stay there for eternity. And who cares about the earth? Who cares about the earth anyway? It's just a rotten place where we have to go sit in a pew and go pew pew and look around and say, I hate this world today. I hate this world today. And so I'm going to vote for the one that hates it as much as I do. And then we'll get rid of it, you see, and we'll all go to heaven and have a party. And God will have to pick up after us because we'll be in heaven, you see. We can throw all our shit around and know that we train God to do the dirty work, you see. Because it was God that had to be the one that maintained the hellish world you see so that we could trust on being the golden idol you see 
Because all we cared about was the goal. All we cared about was the goal. And if our family members cared about the goal, then we got along great. We would say, how much money did you make today? Hey, I like that new couch. Wow, that's pretty nice. Hey, how are you today? Well, I got a new job, you know. So I'm better than all those suckers who don't make as much money as me. And I am going to be so happy, you see. And so you spend your Thanksgiving and your Christmas telling each other how wonderful you are. Or you get together and you say, I didn't get a new car. I didn't get a new car. And then you fight over it or whatever. But how many get together and say, hey, I got a new idea today. I got a new idea today about the way I want to play. I was wondering if when we get together on Thanksgiving or Christmas, we could forget about the presents. And instead of having a big dinner, we just all go out and play with the children, you see. Whether it's a game of tag or whatever. Let's just be together. And that is the way I see that the other side will be. Because the other side, you see, will care more about their connections than about their things, you see. Or about their bank accounts or their get about cars. And so, I'm getting a little sentimental here, I know, Step. And I need to say, I miss you today. And one day we'll all be together. And we'll just sit around the campfire and tell stories and jokes. And remember what it was like to have to work in that factory or pull that cart full of rags just to make a few cents to feed the children that day. And we'll laugh and say, well, that was the day, that was the day before God came to say, hey, I'm releasing all of you from hell, you see. Y'all get to get a get out of jail free card. And those that want to get on the train to the other side can get on the train to the other side. And I'll open the gates to Eden for them. And those who want to go away to heaven where they can stay until I kick them out, you see, can do that. And everybody can be happy. And we'll laugh and say, wasn't that the day? Wasn't that the day?